This week we're going to talk guitar wiring. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. As always, before we get started, remember to like and subscribe down below. So this week I want to focus on two guitar wiring modification, and that is the treble bleed and grease bucket tone circuit. So recently I was rewiring one of my guitars and I had heard the terms treble bleed and grease bucket so many times that I thought they were the same. I never really did a lot of research into the differences between the two. I always just went with a treble bleed, but for this video and for my own sake, I wanted to learn a little bit more about the two circuits and how they affect the output of your guitar. So it's easy to just look at the wiring diagrams or actually your internal wiring and understand what's going on with your circuit. But really, if you wanna understand the response at different levels, the best and easiest way to see it is through a simulation. So this week, what I'm going to do is simulate both the treble bleed, the uh, grease bucket, and then the standard tone circuit using an online tool called Circuit Lab. So quickly, Circuit Lab isn't as intense of a simulation or modeling program as maybe P Spice or LT Spice, but you know this is just for education purposes and it's gonna do the trick here. So with that, let's flip over to the computer and we're going to take a look at these circuits in Circuit Lab. So if we want to understand how the treble bleed and grease bucket circuits affect the response of your guitar, uh, what we're first gonna need to do is look at the standard guitar tone circuit. I've just completed this mock-up here uh, using a model for a guitar pickup that you'll see on the left into a standard guitar tone circuit that you would see, say, on a Telecaster. So as you can see in the dash box, I have my model for guitar pickup. Uh, that's essentially a small signal voltage in series with an inductor and a resistor. And then that is in parallel with a small capacitance. These values that I got here of a 4.5 Henry's for the inductor, 7.5 kilo ohms for the internal resistance, and for the parallel capacitance, 150 picofarad, they were all gathered from uh, the internet, basically looking at what models are used to uh, simulate Telecaster pickups. Moving on to the tone part of the circuit, I think this is pretty uh, standard. Most people have seen this before. We have the output of the pickup is going to run through a potentiometer, which is your tone potentiometer. We have set here at 250 kilo ohms. And then one leg of that is not gonna be attached, but the wiper part is going to go through a 22 nanofarad capacitor to ground. Now, the way this works is when you turn your tone down. So in this case, the wiper would go up here to when K equals zero. What you're doing is you're taking that tone potentiometer out of the circuit and you're allowing all the frequencies, high frequencies, to go to ground through uh, this 22 nanofarad capacitor. And I guess that's kind of the main thing that you should know when you're looking at guitar tone circuits is how capacitors affect the high frequencies. Uh, essentially, a capacitor is a open when we're talking about low frequencies, so you know nothing's gonna pass through it. When we're talking about high frequencies, uh, this is gonna act like a short. So you can think is, as a frequency goes up, this turns into a short. And then lastly, we have our volume section here. Uh, basically, this is attached in parallel with your tone circuit. Um, this wiper is going to basically allow you to go between the output of the uh, pickup and ground. So, you know, high level output or zero output. And then attached onto that, we do have a load, and I'm just assuming that it's a buffer, so it's gonna be a high resistive load of one mega ohm. Now that we know how the standard tone circuit works, let's take a quick look at what the treble bleed tone circuit is. So the treble bleed, as you can see here, is more or less the exact same as the standard tone, except it adds these two extra components here on the end, which in this diagram are labeled R8 and C5. What that is, is a 150 kilo ohm resistor and a 1.2 nano farad capacitor in parallel between the output of the pickup and the output wiper of the volume control. Now the reason that this is called a treble bleed is because as I mentioned before, capacitors will send a signal through it or pass signal through it at high frequencies much more easily than at low frequencies. And what we can think here is we're bleeding the treble, which is the high frequencies, into the output. So essentially what we're just trying to do here is 
keep some of those highs as this resistor is dropped down towards zero. Now the easiest way to look at how this is affected is to take a simulation of both the standard tone circuit and the treble bleed guitar tone circuit and see how the response looks as we vary this volume potentiometer. So quickly back to the standard guitar tone circuit, what we're gonna do is do that simulation. So here we're gonna go from one hertz to 11 kilohertz, and this is varying the frequency of our input voltage. We're gonna take 10 points per decade, and we're also gonna sweep the K value of this volume potentiometer. And unfortunately, Circuit Lab doesn't allow you to do an audio taper on them. So what I've done is put in some custom values to represent 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100% rotation of this pot. So let's see what that looks like. So as you can see here, when the volume is at one, which is shown up here with the green uh, response, you can see we're gonna have uh, our highest volume output, which makes sense as it drops, obviously we're going to get less and less level. You can also see as we increase the frequency of the input voltage, the output voltage is going to be attenuated. So we start to get a drop off probably somewhere around three kilohertz, which would be basically around the upper mid into low treble area of your signal. Flipping over to the treble bleed guitar tone circuit, we're also gonna simulate that one in the same manner. So I've again, uh, going to be varying what is V3 here, the frequency on that from 1 to 11 kilohertz. We're going to take 10 points per decade, again varying that volume from 25% uh, up through 100%. So uh, that's what these custom values are down here. And let's go ahead and run that. So this one is very obvious what it's doing. As we decrease our volume, you can see here, we're going to get more and more of a bump in frequencies or high frequencies bled into our output. So if we were to just quickly switch between the two plots, you can see that at, uh, at volume equals one, this really isn't going to make too much of a difference. We have more or less the same plot. But as we decrease our volume, we're going to start bleeding in treble. We're actually going to boost some of the treble in the output signal. So the main thing to know about the treble bleed guitar circuit, it is a mod to your volume potentiometer. It's essentially trying to keep high frequencies in your output signal as you vary the volume potentiometer. So switching over to the grease bucket guitar tone circuit, um, the first thing that you'll notice here is that the grease bucket circuit is a mod on your tone potentiometer, not your volume potentiometer like your treble bleed. Uh, this would be kind of the main characteristic between the two or change between the two. Um, they're going to do different things to the response of your output as well. But uh, I think that's the first thing to note is treble bleed affects your volume pot and grease bucket affects your tone pot. So the way Fender describes the grease bucket circuit is that when you're rolling off the tone knob, you will reduce the high frequencies but not add bass. So let's see if that is achieved here in our simulations. First, we need to go over the components in the grease bucket circuit. So you'll see here that we now have a uh, capacitor in series with the tone potentiometer's wiper. So that would be uh, leg two of the tone potentiometer. We also have our 22 nanofarad capacitor off the third leg, but in series with it, we also have a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. Now, just thinking about how this looks, when we turn the tone all the way up, the wiper is going to come up here. So we're essentially going to short out C2, and we're going to have a path through our 250 kilo ohm, 22 nanofarad, and a 4.7 K ohm resistor. And this is essentially the same as the standard tone circuit, with just a little bit difference caused by this 4.7 K ohm resistor. When we roll the tone all the way to zero, what we're essentially doing is putting this 100 nanofarad capacitor in parallel with our 250 kilo ohm resistor, and then having that feed into our 22 nanofarad and 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. 
So the best way to show the effects of the grease pocket circuit is to compare it to the standard circuit as well. In both cases, we would vary the tone potentiometer. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't think Circuit Lab does a great job at this. Uh, so we're gonna plot it in Excel, but nonetheless, uh, we're gonna be varying this tone uh, potentiometer here. And I've created some custom values down here as well to represent zero through 10 on your tone control on your guitar. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that in Excel. So I've switched over to Excel, and uh, this is a pretty crude graph in Excel, but I just wanted to uh, show you here instead of on Circuit Lab. Uh, essentially, Excel allows me to plot both responses uh, from the standard and grease buckets on the same plot. So here I actually have four different plots, um, four for the grease bucket, four for the standard tone circuit, at four different levels of tone on the guitar, uh, that being zero, five, seven, and 10. So the grease bucket circuit is supposed to not really affect the signal when your tone is up. And I think that's very well shown here in the graph when we look at uh, the responses um, up here in gold and blue. And it's actually a little bit hard to see. I'll see if I can zoom in maybe, but there is multiple lines there, uh, one over the other. So you can see um, here there's a gold over top of a, a blue, which would be the grease bucket and the standard tone circuit when they're at uh, tone equals 10. And then here you have blue over red, which would be the standard tone circuit and the grease bucket tone circuit when they're at seven. So at high values of tone, you're not gonna really see any difference or the difference is gonna be very subtle from the grease bucket tone circuit when compared to the standard tone circuit. Zooming back out, um, the ones that we're really interested in is at the lower tone settings. So I've picked out zero and five here. Uh, let's first look at the zero setting. So the zero setting on the tone. You can see when we have a standard tone circuit, when the tone goes to zero, we're gonna get a nice bump here in the frequencies. And this is right around 400 Hertz. Uh, 400, 500, maybe even back as far as three and 200, we're bumping up these frequencies. Um, these would kind of be at the higher end of your bass frequencies. So uh, obviously as you turn your tone down with a standard circuit, everybody should be aware that you're gonna hear more bass. That's because you're cutting treble. As you can see, the trebles are decreasing here and you're adding in this bass uh, frequency here. Looking at the same value with the grease bucket circuit, you can see we're doing two things. One is we're decreasing that base. So we're not getting as much base when we have tone at zero. So you can tell by what these values are compared to the standard circuit, obviously they're lower. And then secondly, what we're doing is we're increasing the treble. So uh, we're not attenuating the treble as much when we have our tone at zero. So I think this is basically the, the heart of what the grease bucket is, is when we reduce the treble, I mean, the, the treble is getting reduced here for sure, we're not getting that bump in bass. So it's two things that's really going on here is we're not reducing the treble as much. So perception of bass goes down, and then obviously we're not increasing the bass as much, so perception of bass goes down. And then lastly, at tone equals five, and I might have to zoom in here as well, you can see just a, a subtle difference here as well. Obviously when tones five, we're not getting as huge of a bass bump, but we are getting a uh, higher treble point here for the grease bucket circuit. And that's represented by the green plot here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the breakdown of the treble bleed and grease bucket tone circuits. I think really, the, the main things to take away is the treble bleed is a modification to your volume pot and the grease bucket is a modification to your tone pot. Um, the other one is treble bleed is going to add in more high frequencies as you reduce the volume. And really what the grease bucket is doing is it's more smoothing out your response. So it's taking those high bases and those low treble frequencies and it's actually kind of decreasing the bass and increasing the treble. So you get maybe more of a smooth, more level uh, response or balanced response across the spectrum. Now, one thing to say before signing out is that a lot of these simulations were based on a vintage Tele uh, model pickup. 
Obviously, if you're gonna use different pickups, you're gonna get different looking responses. And most of that really is around your bass responses with lower inductance uh, coils. You're gonna see a higher bass bump. And with the, the vintage Tele one that I used, you had a pretty flat response across the full spectrum with the standard tone circuit. So that's all for this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Remember to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.